All right, guys, paper one, paper two, high yield topics for LXL A-level maths. I've been insanely busy these last few months, so it's been a hot minute since I did my last video, but it's always my goal to bring these kind of analysis, high yield topic videos to you um, around exam season, right? So that's what I'm gonna do for this video, right? Um, first thing is, I'm not a psychic, right? Obviously, you know, disclaimer and all that good stuff. Um, this is just me looking at years and seeing what's going on. So I started making these YouTube videos of like analysis back in uh, a couple years ago now, the chemistry. And since then, a few other YouTubers have jumped on the wave, but I'm gonna get back to it. And I'm gonna see what's going on. Now, the most important thing for maths, right, is you're gonna see certain topics and subtopics that are favored over others for maths. Pretty obvious, right? Because exams are a game, there's specific trends, patterns, and favoritism by examiners to, to see that you know what you're talking about in an exam, right? The most important thing with maths is that you start at the fundamental level. So if you're at like a D and you want to get to an A, A star, which is at the top of the castle, you can't jump into like advanced integration trick questions. Okay, you got to start right down here at the bottom of the castle, get those fundamentals going and work your way up. Obviously, it's a bit late now because <laughs> there's like one week until the exam. But yeah, work your way up there. Um, I'm not going to say anything else about this, but they stack, maths abilities stack tremendously, more than other topics, all right? So with that out of the way, let's jump into the grade boundaries, okay? So I don't know why last year I mentioned that 2019 and 2020 A star grade boundary marks were missing. I could not find them anywhere. Some students dropped them in the comments, but I couldn't find them and I couldn't spend time looking through the comments on my previous video. So these are kind of just missing for now. But what you can see, and other YouTubers have made videos about this, about how the grade boundaries have shot up recently. They kind of returned to the 2018 trend that was going on. Um, so, you know, you're looking at low 80s for A star, mid to high 60s for an A, etc. Okay, and that's for paper one. Paper two is over here, around the same kind of thing, to be honest. Okay, then we've got an average of all the years over here, A star down to C. And then we've got an average of the top three. So I thought, you know what? If we ignore the sort of COVID years and stuff like that, where things are a bit lower, we can look at what the average of the top three is, and that will give you a decent idea of what you should be aiming for to get an A or an A star. Um, if you're going for a B, no, that's calm, but if you're going for an A or A star, you want to be getting high 60s to mid 80s. Um, 2018 was a bit of an outlier. I guess it was the first year. So yeah, I'd say, I'd say low to mid 80s for an A star, if that's what you're going for mid to high 60s for an A, okay? This is just paper one and two combined because obviously we've got the same topics and subtopics broadly across these two pure papers. Um, so if you're going for an A star and A overall for combined papers, you want to be going for around a 130 for an A and around 160 for an A star, um, low 160s here. Um, so yeah, if you can do that, if you flop paper one and you want get to your, get your grade back with paper two or vice versa, um, that's kind of what the grade boundaries are looking like. Right, topics, let's look at this. So if you aren't familiar with my channel, obviously exams are a game. How do you get good at the game? You practice the game, AKA the past papers, right? So you wanna be going away like an absolute crackhead and just <laughs> relentlessly doing these past papers over and over again, focusing on your mistakes, repeating your mistakes and just learning from your mistakes essentially, right? Mistakes, mistakes, mistakes. Um, so what we can see here, is the marks. So this is the total marks across the seven years, I think it is now, 2020, no, 2018 to 2024. Percentage of the total marks, frequency, so how many times did they come up? Like we can see here, you can't really dodge a single topic. They come up every single year. Now that distribution is gonna be different depending on paper one and paper two. They can kind of mix and match as they need to. Um, but what you really wanna be paying attention to really is average marks per year appearance, which is basically like the year that this did come up, of the paper one and two combined, what was our average marks? So you can see the top four that you really, really wanna be focusing on is algebra and functions at number one, integration, differentiation, trig, okay? After that, it dips a little bit, sequence and series, exponential and logs. This one just straight off the dome, they absolutely love modeling now for whatever reason. So a lot of the exponential and log modeling is what is gonna come up for that, but you can, you can see that a little bit later in the video. Um, then geometry, numerical methods, vectors, and proof. So essentially that's the overall topics that come up. Um, if you want to look at it in like a graph format, we can see here the 
proportion of total mark. So that is just this guy right here. Um, on the y-axis, x-axis is just the topic, right? So it gives you a, a, a visualization of how you want to be spending the majority of your time, your revision time up here. Obviously at this point, you're probably doing past papers, right? Um, but some of you just won't realize which topics or haven't spent the time to think which topics are the most important to go through separately to the overall, like the entire past paper, right? So if you want to fine tune it, go for these four. And then after you've like absolutely perfected those four, jump your way down a little bit down here. But yeah, as you can see, that's what you want to be doing, right? Next up, this is just average marks. So it's just a little sort of like different representation of how things are looking. So, you know, no brainer folks on these ones, guys. Okay. Right, let's look at this. Now, this is the subtopic breakdown, okay? So everything is color-coded again. If you wanna take a screenshot of this guy, if I rub this out, you wanna take a screenshot of that. It's all the different topics. And then over here, color-coded, unless I messed up and messed up some of the colors, which is definitely possible. Um, it's all the subtopics that belong to the overarching topic. So the number one subtopic, trig identities and equations, all right? Number one by a decent margin, like 10 marks, right? Then we got log mo <laughs> exponential and log modeling as its subtopic is the second highest topic for Excel maps. Like put that into perspective. Exponentials and logs are down here, right? For average marks. But when you've got their, the subtopic to that, to that topic, if that makes sense, it's second highest. So if you guys are like, what should I do for exponentials and logs? Do those modeling past paper questions, right? Then you've got some uh, integration, differential equations, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I'm not gonna spend ages going through this. Feel free to screenshot it and give you a bit of understanding of what you wanna focus your time on within that topic, right? I wanna do differentiation today. What do I need to master? Okay, most of the time, it's gonna be the more difficult year two concepts and, and subtopics, right? Um, if you're not too sure, average marks per paper over here, um, and the frequency is different to the topic, right? So even though every single topic came up, what's happened to my pen? My pen has disappeared. Let's reset this. All right, we're back. The pen is back. So Miro freaked out. Okay, so average marks per paper is here. What you'll notice is that the frequency is not seven for every subtopic. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Um, but all of these higher ones have come up every single year without fail, regardless of if it's paper two or paper one. So just make sure you check them out, make sure you understand them well, do your YouTubing and all that kind of good stuff, right? So yeah, take a screenshot of this, use it as you need to, all right? Right, from there, I wanna look at the trends. So I was thinking to myself, like, we can't really predict what's gonna happen. We can look at frequency, we can look at, the, oh, this was missing last year, what can come up this year? That's also a good thing to do potentially. And as you can look where the marks were really low and we'll look at that in a second. So for example, like exponential log modeling was fairly low last year. But another way I thought to do it was to look at the curve, right? So curve is just coefficient of variation. All that is essentially is a ratio between standard deviation and the mean, the average. Okay, and it just essentially shows variability. So the high, and it's always presented as a percentage. I say always normally, right? So basically what I want you to take away from this is the lower the percentage, the more consistent the marks are, okay? The closer it is to the average, if that makes sense, all right? So if we wanted to look at the lowest cobs, we have this one, let me just make a note. So I, this one, this one, this one, and this one, okay? Differentiation, you can see there was a huge dip in 2019, which means you know we have a much higher variability um, than these other, other topics. But with that being said, you still wanna spend like 80% of your time on these top four topics, okay? Maybe you wanna spend some more of your time after that on exponentials and logs, because last year was kinda low, okay? So that is basically what I'm thinking here. Feel free to screenshot this as well if you want. Um, if you're that interested. Right, what we're gonna look at now is like a graph. Like there's not really, a, and feel free to jump off the video guys. You basically got all you need unless you're absolutely nerding out right now and you wanna know what could potentially come up this year as an absolute guess, then feel free to stick around. But basically this is a graph of the table that you just saw, right? It's just a graph of this table. So 
we can look at it topic by topic and we can think to ourselves, why is it frozen again? Love it. Absolutely love it. So let's close that. Okay, there we go. Right. So we can look at it topic by topic. So we can see algorithm functions had a fairly low cov. So you can see it's pretty consistent. So I would revise this one like without a shadow of a doubt. It's going to come up this year. Is it going to peak again higher than it was? Who knows? Like as we can see over here in 2024, it's, it's had an increase. And then there was two increases in a row here. One increase, one decrease, one increase, two increase, one decrease, one increase. So it's either going to be more than it was last year or it's going to be slightly less or around the same. Okay, obviously this is just completely random. Integration was huge last year. As you can see, this is the peak, absolute peak last year of where it's ever been. So my guess is it's gonna go down this year. But like I said, it's kind of meaningless because you have to learn integration to a really high level anyway, if you wanna get an A or an A star. So it's not too important to go through this kind of stuff, but if you guys are interested, here we are. Diff has gone up two years in a row. So I expect Diff to go down this year, especially considering we've almost got a completely year high almost like it's on par of 2018 right so that's pretty high as well so it's i'm i'm pretty sure diff is going to go down this year trig i'm pretty sure trig is going to go up um what have we got here it's gone down for one year but it's basically the same as 2023 um i think trig is going to go up because the last few years have been lower than 2018 to 2021 so i'm thinking trig is going to go up this year but who who knows to be honest Sequence and series, I think that's going to go up or just be around the same, to be honest. It's pretty stable. Exponential and logarithms, I think, is going to go up. I think it's going to go up. I don't know how much it's going to go up by, but as you can see here, there's not really a year where it dips twice in a row. It sort of goes, if you look at it, it sort of goes up, down, up, down, up, down. So we're going to get an up this year. That's my sort of thinking there. What we got here, geometry. I think geometry is going to go up this year. So across these three years, it was pretty damn stable, right? So I think that considering it dipped last year, it's going to go up to sort of stabilize again. Um, that's my thoughts. But again, this is just like looking at stuff. Uh, numerical methods is pretty stable. There's not much to say there. I think it's going to go up. Um, that's my thoughts there. Vectors, it's pretty stable as well. I'd say if you are, if you find vectors easy, go for vectors because it comes up every year. Obviously, everything comes up every year, but you know, um, for, for not the highest marks, as we can see here around, what's that? Eight to 10 marks. Um, but uh, there we go. Proof is the lowest by far. So yeah, take this with a grain of salt. I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm just looking at trends, algebra and functions, integration, differentiation, trig. There we go. Good luck guys. Peace.